What's up, people? Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are all doing good. It's been a really long time. I mean, it's been more than a week since I've last, uh, you know, taken any session on YouTube. How have you guys been? What is new in life? How is everything going? What has your life been like for the past one week? Yo, Graf known Shreyas. Hi, Zen. What's up? Hello, hello. Hi, Aaron. Welcome. My name is Anub and this is Vidanta's 9th and 10th English channel. I hope you guys are doing fantastically well. So before we get started, guys, I'm really sorry for not coming live or having uh, taken any session on YouTube for the last one, one and a half week. The reason was that because uh, I was COVID positive. So, yeah. <laughs> Good news keeps flowing, uh, you know, every month, I like, you know, every one, once in a month, though, I keep getting this good news. So yeah, I was quite positive. So because of that, I couldn't take any sessions. I was not well at all. So I'm back now. I mean, still not feeling that great. I'm still quite positive, but I'm still, I mean, I mean, I'm doing a little better than how I was a couple of days ago. That's why I decided uh you know finally let's starting sessions so anyways a very warm welcome to all of you guys out there this is going to be the fourth session of magnetic effect of electric current yes zen i do remember you welcome 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 so this is going to be about dc motor and it's working very important topic because with respect your term to examination which is definitely going to be subjective in nature this is a question that can be uh definitely asked in your board exam this is a question that has been repeated so many times in the previous year question papers if you were to you know take a look at the past 10 years question papers this is one thing that has been repeated so many number of times so there's a very high probability that this question might be asked this year also when it comes to uh, you know it can be asked as a five mark question or a three mark question so working and uh, you know the working principle the uh, you know the diagram all of this is very important when it comes to dc mode so i'm going to teach you that in today's session we're going to keep it very simple we're going to keep it light make sure you stay till the end because i also have a lot of questions uh for you people in store at the end of the session so we'll have quizzes as well so do not miss that out now apart from that guys a couple of notifications that i want to tell you before we start is this that uh you can take the quiz even after the session is done right now it's going on live so whenever you're watching it it really doesn't matter you can take the quiz whenever and wherever you are from so all you have to do is go to the description and click on this link to attempt the quiz and that will help you to take part in the quiz again now if you're using if you're watching it on a mobile phone then you have to click on this drop down box once you click on the drop down then you can click on this link and take the quiz once again so before we get started people as always we'll quickly jump onto the backtrack round do a couple of quiz questions and then we will start with today's session right so before we start as always we're going to start off with the quiz so every one of you guys who are here right now i want you guys to join the quiz as well now these questions that i'm going to start off the sessions with are going to be the questions from the previous session where we talked about the force on a current carrying conductor so i'm going to ask you a couple of questions based on that and then we'll go into the topic for today once we are done with the topic again we're going to come back to the same quiz time the same link the same uh game code as well and then take the quiz once again right so for all those who are new all you have to do is this go to join my quiz dot dot com and enter the code 214918 all right in order to join the quiz quickly guys hi aaron yes yes hi buddy what's up good afternoon doyle what's up <clears throat> I know, I know, I know, I know, Aaron. Everyone wants it to be MCQs, but unfortunately, it is definitely going to be subjective in nature. So be prepared for that mentally and physically. Be prepared for that. All right, quickly, guys, quickly. Uh, I want all of you guys to uh, join the quiz as well. Again, it's a very simple uh, thing. You have to go open up a new tab, of whatever you know you're on, whether it's Chrome or Internet Explorer. Go to joinmyquiz.com, this website that you see over here, and enter the coupon code. Sorry, the code coupon code. The code two one four nine one eight. All right, that's the code for today. Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, people, let's go, let's go. Hi, Arsta, what's up? <clears throat> On Batch Classic. <laughs> All right. Hi, Arad, what's up? Hi, Rudra, Rudresh, what's up, buddy? How are you doing? Hi, Jay. Hi, Shreyas. Hi, Zain. A long time. Hi, Z 
वसुंधरा हाय स्पर्शिका हाय आयुषी एंड देवदर्शनी और इट्स सो क्विकली गाइज क्विकली आई वॉन्ट एवरी वन ऑफ यू जॉइन द क्विज बिकॉज एनी वेज यू नो इट्स बेटर टू टेक पार्ट ऑफ द क्विज एंड सी एंड टेस्ट योर नॉलेज रैन जस्ट सिट देर एंड वॉच अदर पीपल आंसर राइट ओके सो आई थिंक आई गिव यू नदर थर्टी सेकेंड्स बिफोर वी स्टार्ट विद द क्विज नाउ अगेन दीज क्वेश्चन आर सोली बेस्ड ऑन वॉट वी लर्न इन द प्रीवियस सेशन सो इफ यू हैव इन वॉच दैट येट इफ यू आर फाइंडिंग दैट टॉपिक डिफिकल्ट दैट इज द फोर्स ऑन अ करेंट कैरिंग कंडक्टर आई वुड अर्ज यू टू वॉच दैट वीडियो इन गो बैक यूल फाइंड इट इन द प्ले लिस्ट समवेयर सो गो स्क्रोल थ्रू द प्ले लिस्ट यूल फाइंड इट एब्सोल्यूटली फ्री इट विल हार्डली टेक यू सम थर्टी मिनट्स ऑसो गो थ्रू द टॉपिक to understand the topic better and then after that read your textbook as well and it'll be good to go right so i'll start the quiz people so here we go in 3 2 1 the first question from the previous session that we learned uh, from that is the force on a current carrying conductor here we go this is the first question on your screens here we go yes and it is all yes let's go in okay which of the following can be used to determine the possible direction of motion of current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field which of these can be used to find out the force on a current carrying conductor the direction of force on a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field options are fleming's right hand rule fleming's left hand rule right hand thumb rule or the cork screw rule which of these abhishek sir jaldi aayega <laughs> abhishek sir is garvi starting from feb first day he'll be joining from feb first he is also covid positive so <laughs> <laughs> like it's all it's all it's all been amazing so far anyways congratulations zen then it's shreyas then it's ajay followed by followed by amisha then it's devadarshini ayushi vasundra ayush and ayush kakul the super awesome da aaron sparshika congratulations congratulations guys good start good start nine of you guys got the right answer it is actually fleming's left hand rule so according to fleming's left hand rule if you were to extend your middle finger index finger and thumb such a way that they are all perpendicular to each other your middle finger shows the direction of the current your index finger shows the direction of the magnetic field and your thumb shows the direction of the force on the current carrying conductor so basically an easy analogy to remember this is father mother child so child is nothing but the current m is nothing but the mother which is nothing but the magnetic field and f father is nothing but the force on the current carrying conductor so it has to be option number c congratulations to all those who got it right whoever got it wrong please go back to the video and go through it one more time you will understand it clearly all right second question here we go the force on a current carrying conductor when placed perpendicular in a uniform magnetic field is what is the formula to find out the force on a current carrying conductor that is the magnitude of force options are f is equal to bil f is equal to bi by l f is equal to b divided by il or none of these make any sense what do you think what is the formula to calculate the magnitude of force on a current carrying conductor in other words the magnitude of the lorentz force acting on a conductor Let's go, people. Time's up. Here we go again. It is the leaderboards. We have Zen who got it right. Amisha also got it right. Devdashi moves up. Devdashi and Amisha goes up a couple of spots. Eleven of you guys got the right answer. That is fantabulous, people. Fantastic job. Absolutely. F is equal to B I L. F is nothing but the magnitude of force. B is nothing but the magnetic field. I is nothing but the current, and L is nothing but the length of the conductor. So if you know the magnetic field, if you know the current, uh, and if you know the length of the conductor, you can actually find out the magnitude of force. Uh, on uh, acting on a current carrying conductor or the magnitude of lorentz force right so that is the end of the first quiz time only a couple of questions but we have a lot of questions left out about five questions left out which i'm reserving it for the uh, next quiz time that is once we are done with the topic because the topic for today is very important so keeping that in mind uh, you know i've put a lot of majority of the questions towards the end so make sure you stay till the end and do not leave this quiz yet because because we'll be coming back to this quiz time once we're done with the topic so the topic might take another 10 15 minutes and then again we'll come back to the quiz so do not leave the quiz leave it as it is keep that tab open and we'll quickly hop into uh, youtube and go through the topic very quickly and then get started with the quiz once again all right so that was the end of the first quiz time let's get back to the topic all right guys everyone listen up carefully <clears throat> first of all congrats listen carefully now. so here is the thing guys 
DC motor. What is DC motor? Where is it used? And more importantly, what is the working principle and construction of a DC motor actually like? Because the reason why I'm telling you all these things is because this by far is one of the most important questions that has been repeated from this chapter so many number of times. And I, I can't even count the number of times this question has been repeated. So please pay attention to what I'm about to say. And once you're, I, I would urge you to do this, that once you're done with the topic, read your NCRT once and you will be good to go. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about this topic anymore. Right, first of all guys, where all are DC motors used? The fact is guys, DC motor is everywhere around you. From the vacuum cleaners, to the hair dryers, to vacuum pumps, the air compressors, all of these work on the principle of DC motor. Not only this, if, uh, if you have ever played with those toy cars, you know those remote control cars or those cars where you drag it back and you let it go, all of these work on the same principle of DC motor itself. Now the question is, what is a DC motor and what does it look like and more importantly, how does it work? Because understanding the working principle is by far the most important thing that you need to know from this chapter. So we're going to talk about three important things. One is the working principle, second is the construction and thirdly the working of DC motor. Now the working principle is actually quite simple, it's actually quite straightforward. If you've attended the previous session of magnetic effect of electric current, working principle is basically based on that. It is nothing but the working principle of a DC motor is based on Lorentz force or in other words the force acting on a current carrying conductor when it is placed in a magnetic field. Now I don't I don't think I have to repeat this but I'm going to say it anyways because I know that a lot of you guys haven't watched that video so I'm going to repeat it very quickly what it means in brief. If I have a current carrying conductor imagine this is a conductor and I have connected this to the positive and the negative terminal of a cell. Now when the electrons are flowing through this, imagine I have a horseshoe magnet, all right? Now, a horseshoe magnet has a north and a south pole. Now, when I place this current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, this, the electrons or the conductor in itself will experience a force because of the magnetic field, because of the magnetic field that is around it. That force on a current carrying conductor is the basic principle behind the working of a DC motor as well. So if you want to understand this better, I've already done a video, one hour video on this, so you can go through that. But yes, that is the basic principle it works on. Now let's talk about the construction part of it. Like what does it look like? And you know, what are the things you need to remember when it comes to drawing the diagram? Because again, drawing the diagram can also be a part, uh, if it's a five mark question, then you'll have to draw the diagram as well. So pay attention to what I'm about to say next. So first thing that you can notice is these big, uh, you know, I would say magnets. Now, although they've told that one is one side is north and one side is south, you guys already know that you can't have a magnet with one single pole you can't have one north pole and one south pole you can't have monopole magnets in general so basically it's one particular magnet it can be a circular magnet so it basically one side is the north pole and the other side is the south pole so it's it's one single magnet or it, it, it cannot be two different magnets what I'm trying to say is that even though in the picture it says it's one side is north and one side is south that is not the case the actual construction is a little different from what you see over here but nonetheless one side is north and the other side is the south pole. In between what you see over here is called as the armature coil. This is called as the armature coil. Now the armature coil, what is the, what is the speciality of this is that this armature coil can rotate. So basically what we are trying to do is that we are, we are passing the current through this armature coil and since it is already placed in a magnetic field and magnetic field lines are always going from north to south pole, right? So since it's already placed in a magnetic field, what would happen is that that, that electrons flowing through that conductor or the conductor in itself will experience a force and that is the basic principle like I just mentioned before. So this is the armature coil that you see over here. This uh, we can name this as A, this as B and this is C and this is D. So basically you can see that it's a rectangular shaped uh, armature coil and that armature coil is connected to 
or something called as a split ring so split ring is basically like a it's a complete ring you can see that it's a, it's like a complete ring but it's you know it's like it's divided in half so this is the split ring again that split ring is also free to rotate so one end of this armature coil is connected to one of the split rings which you can call it as uh, uh, s1 just call it as s1 and the other one you can call it as s2 which is split ring uh, split ring number 2 now the split ring in itself is connected to the external circuit using these two carbon brushes so these yellow things that you see over here these are the carbon brushes carbon in the sense they are made up of graphite and they basically look like if you were to use a microscope or if you were to look very carefully the surface looks something like this so the surface is actually like this it's it's you know it's got this irregular pointed stuff and that is then connected to the uh, the split ring so basically that's how the connection goes so you know that graphite is a good conductor so basically the uh, the carbon brush connects the external circuit so this is the external circuit where you have connected the battery the switch and what not all of that is connected to this uh, split ring using these brushes now apart from this there's one more part that is mixing or uh, missing over here and that is basically the axle so this split ring is in turn connected to the rotating or uh, rotating part so basically you'll have an axle and at the end of the axle you can have a fan or it could be something else which is connected and as the commutator or, or as the uh, split ring commutator rotates this uh, particular device or whatever it is fan or whatever that is that will also start to rotate so these are all the parts that is there. i know it's, it's a little confusing there's a lot that you need to remember over here so i'm going to keep it simple i'm going to keep it light so again don't worry about it the diagram although looks very complicated with a little bit of practice if you ever if you can do it like three to four times you can easily do it it's not that complicated at all you just need to remember a few things few connections and you're good to go so there's nothing too complicated about this but it's important that you remember and uh, practice these uh, diagrams as well so basically guys these are the different parts you have the magnets the armature coil that i just talked about the axle which is basically connected to the split ring then you have the split rings brushes and the external circuit where you have the cell the switch and what not now If you look at this entire DC motor, right, there are few parts that is free to rotate about an axis. There are few few things that can rotate, and few things are not, uh, you know, they're they're stationary. So based on this, the parts of these different these the, these different parts have been divided div divided into stators and rotors. So stators are basically those parts which are stationary, which don't really rotate, which are standing still. Like for example, the magnets. Ah, uh, you can see that the magnets, the external circuit. The the carbon brush all of these are stationary they don't they don't really move they don't rotate the rotors on on the other hand are those which which are free to rotate like for example the armature coil uh, the uh, the split rings the axle all of these are free to rotate so those are called as the rotors now again something that is uh, very trivial but it's still important to remember because they might ask it as a one mark question uh, there's a probability that they might ask you as a one mark or two mark question what are the different stators and rotors so please remember these things as well anything that is free to rotate those would come under the category of rotors because they are free to rotate and anything that is stationary which are not you know which are not which are not moving those are called as stators so basically guys this is how the dc motors work so basically they rotate uh, inside or within this magnet and that uh, you know rotates this axle and at the end of the axle you can basically fix a fan or anything else and that would also rotate along with it and so that is basically the uh, working principle behind it so what goes on inside like what are the things that you need to know when it comes to the actual circuit and how do you figure that out so that is what i'm going to talk about next so pay attention now okay this is very very important with respect to your term to examination so listen very carefully now what i'm going to talk about is basically the direction of current and basically i'm going to use my fleming's left hand rule to show how these armature coils are rotating and how the split ring is in turn rotating and how the axle is rotating with respect to that so listen carefully now initially guys you can see that the current is uh, you know flowing in this direction current flows from positive terminal to the negative terminal so i'll call this one as uh, uh, let's say that this this brush uh, this is the carbon brush i'll call it as b1 and b2 carbon brush number 1 carbon brush number 2 r1 is the uh, basically the commutator or the split ring so we'll call it as a split ring which is nothing but the r1 uh, r1 is the first split ring r2 is the second split ring now look at this if you look at the direction of current right now if you look at the direction of current current is flowing from the positive terminal 
through B1, which is basically made up of graphite, which is a good conductor, flows through R1 and then enters into the armature coil. Now, once it enters into the armature coil, you can see that the current is flowing through A, B, then C, then C, and then D, and then back into the split ring number 2, which is R2, then B2, and then finally goes back into the cell. Right, people? This is clear so far, right? This is the direction of current. It's very clear this is how the current is flowing because you can see that there's no other path for the current to flow. So this is how the path, the current is flowing now. Now, what I want you guys to focus on is the armature coil AB. All right, I want you guys to focus on AB right now. Now, if you look at it, <clears throat> the magnetic field always moves from north to south pole. So this is the direction of the magnetic field, right? This is the direction of the magnetic field, which is going from north to south pole. Now, if you look at the current, current is basically traveling from A to B. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Fleming's left hand rule here. So pay attention. I'm going to use Fleming's left hand rule. So what is Fleming's left hand rule? Again, according to Fleming's left hand rule, my thumb shows the direction of the force on the current carrying conductor. My index finger shows the direction of the uh, magnetic field and my middle finger shows the direction of current. Magnetic field is going from north to south in this direction from left to to right or from east to from west to east right this is the direction of my magnetic field my current is flowing from south to north so in this direction so basically it's flowing from south to north a to b so you can see that over there no it's going from south to north so if you extend your thumb you can see that the direction of the force on this conductor so the conductor a b that is there will experience a force in which direction guys in which direction will it uh, will it help quickly 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 if my magnetic field is going from left to right my current is going towards north towards the screen right now or towards a uh, towards a camera that is from a to b what direction will my conductor experience a force exactly it will experience a force in the downward direction so my conductor av that is there will basically be forced to move downwards or it will experience a force in the downward direction all right that is the case of ab now what about cd now now bc you got bc is basically you know parallel to uh, the magnetic field so you you don't have to consider that allow because the angle is zero right they're both parallel to each other so the angle is zero degrees so you don't have to consider that now let's talk about cd now all right same thing let's do it for cd as well if you look at cd current is flowing in the downward direction so middle, middle finger the current is flowing in the downward direction just basically towards me right now magnetic field is still going from south to north in which direction is the force on cd right now CD will experience a force in the upward direction. Once again, pay attention. Magnetic field from left to right. Magnetic field is not changing. But current right now is going from, from the camera towards me right now. So this is my middle finger pointing towards me right now. All right. So what is the direction of the force in the conductor? The thumb, which is basically pointing upwards. So because of this, people, what will happen is that the armature coil will start to rotate. Why? Because it is experiencing a force since it is kept between a magnetic field or in a magnetic field, it will experience a force. And because of that, what will happen is that, which is, okay, I'll just stop. I, I, I don't know if this is gonna help, but I'm just gonna show it anyways. So I've marked something over here. I don't know if you guys can see this A, B, C, D, I don't know which is A, A, B, C, and D, you can see it over here. So what happens is basically guys, because of this force, what will happen? This is AB, right? AB will move down and CD will move upwards. Now, once it reaches halfway, once it reaches basically one fourth of the way through, what is going to happen is that once it reaches halfway through, the split ring, as you can see, there's a small gap in between. The split ring has a small gap in between. So once it reaches halfway like this, once it reaches like this, so basically right now, this is C, this is D, this is a and this is b once it's once it is flipped over like this so a b is downwards cd is upwards when it's like this the splittering is now 
you know is has disconnected because there is no connection between the brush and the splittering right now because there's a gap over there right the splittering is basically there's a small gap over here there's a small gap over here but here's the thing since it already has some momentum since it already has some momentum it will complete half a rotation all right since it has which since it has some momentum it has already it has some force right so it has it has moved all the way till here because it already has some momentum what will happen is that it will complete one half of the cycle when it completes one of the one half of the cycle what will happen right now is that my circuit my direction of current will now get you know change or it'll basically uh, what to say it'll, it'll turn over now if you look at the uh, the uh, armature coil here you have d this is c this is b and this is a in other words people this is a b c d right this is initially like this when it turned around what happened right now this here where there was a now you have d where there was b now you have c and where you have b uh, where you have C, now you have B, and where you have D, now it has become A. So basically what's happening is that the direction of current is changing here. Initially, the current was going from B1 to uh, the splittering R1 to A, B, C, D, then to the splittering R2, then the brush B2 and then uh, it flowed, uh, you know, it basically flew back into the cell. Since it has completed half a rotation, since it has completed half a rotation, now the direction of current is from B1 to R2 because the, the splitting is also rotated. So from R1 it has become R2 and if you look at the armature coil, it has become DC. The current is flowing from DCBA now, then R1 and then b2 getting it people are you able to understand this so what is happening is that the direction of current is changing every half rotation so once it completes this is the initial thing completed half a rotation now once again if you look at cd once again if you look at cd again use fleming's left hand rule over there direction of current is in this direction magnetic field is still going from left to right the force on the current carrying conductor, uh, basically, uh, you know, it'll, uh, okay, ha. If you look at the uh, magnetic field, the magnetic field is going from left to right, sorry. The current is going from uh, south to north or from towards the screen right now. And if you look at the direction of current, it is going to be downwards. So once again, CD will, up, you know, CD will experience a force in the downward direction and BA will experience a force in the upward direction and this will continue to happen people. This will continue to happen. So basically what's happening is that once it reaches halfway because of momentum it will complete, complete one rotation, half a rotation. Again, once it reaches over here, again it will experience a force. It's not going to stop, right? Because current is still flowing. So again, it will complete half a rotation. Again, it will complete and it will keep on rotating like this over and over and over again until the current is flowing through the circuit. And because of that rotation, like I told you, as the splitting is rotating, what will happen is that here you'll have an axle connected to it. So that axle, at the end of the axle, you'll have, uh, you know, the uh, motor or maybe the fan, whatever it is that you want to, uh, you know, run, that will be connected at the end of the axle and that will also continue to rotate. So this is the basic working principle behind the DC motor. That's it. It's just force on a current carrying conductor. But you just need to remember this, that every, so you see there's no, once it reaches halfway, the you can see that. Initially current is flowing, but once it reaches halfway through, once it reaches over here, because of the disconnect, because the splitting is divided in half, there's a disconnection, the current stops flowing, but it already has some momentum. So because of the momentum, it'll continue to rotate and complete half a rotation or complete half a cycle. And it'll continue to do so until and unless current is flowing through it. I hope it's clear, people. <clears throat> I hope it's clear. <clears throat> is it clear, people? Did you understand this? So this is the basic working principle behind the DC motor. How it? Uh, what is the role of the axle? The axle is basically where the, if for example, if, let's say that I want to rotate a fan. All right. So the fan will be connected to the axle. So this axle will be. Uh, so basically, this is the axle. I'll just show you the photo so that you know. Ha! This is the axle. So this this thing that you see, you know, this is the axle. So at the end of the axle, you would have connected whatever you want to connect. Maybe the fan or maybe 
it's uh you know you want to run a car whatever it is basically toy car whatever that will be connected at the end of it and because of the axles rotation those uh whatever other rot rotary parts that will also start to rotate and that will make it work so that is basically how it works all right <coughs> we are using uh, we are not using right and thumb rule over here the right and thumb rule you can use it only for current the magnetic field in a straight current carrying conductor here we are using fleming's left hand rule fleming's left hand rule is what is used again what is fleming's left hand rule when you extend your middle finger your your index finger middle finger and thumb such a way that they are all perpendicular to each other they are all 90 degrees to each other what happens is that your index finger shows the direction of the magnetic field All right, index finger shows the direction of the magnetic field. Your middle finger shows the direction of the current, and your thumb shows the direction of the force on the current carrying conductor. So basically, using right hand thumb rule, we are actually uh, making all of this work. All right, so that is what it depends on. Now there are few things that you can actually use to control the speed at which it rotates, because obviously you know uh, you can't always uh, stick to the same speed like in, in industries and all that. You need faster motors. You need to produce more uh, you know RPM or rotation per minute. So over there, in order to change that, we have few things that you can uh, you know uh, would say mess around with. For example, you can increase the strength of the magnetic field. So instead of using a weak magnet, you can use a stronger electromagnet that is what is generally used in industries and all we don't use permanent magnets we use electromagnets over there because electromagnets work uh, you know you can uh, you can change the uh, the magnetic field by changing the current and the number of turns so we use electromagnets over there by using the, by changing the strength of the magnet you can increase the uh, the force on the current carrying conductor so it will start to rotate much more faster you can also increase by increasing the current in the coil as well so if you increase the current flowing to the armature coil that can also increase the number of turns and the number of rotations per minute and also you can also uh, you know uh, increase the number of turns for example uh, if you have ever uh, you know seen the actual uh, you know uh, have you guys ever uh, opened up these toy cars and all that have you guys ever uh, you know opened up toy cars and all that you would actually see a lot of these kind of you know uh, what do you call these copper wires that are wound like this have you guys ever seen one of those before so you have these kind of uh, you would probably see in one of these you'll have the the magnet and then inside you'll have so many copper turns so those copper turns the, the, again the more the number of turns the faster it rotates so basically to increase in a increase the speed we actually uh, increase the number of turns as well so that more current flows through it and more force would be experienced by the current carrying conductor so all of these ha huh, they'll be actually you know uh, it'll actually be very coil in industries it'll be much more larger you can imagine that no it'll be much more bigger because you need to produce more power over there you need more rotations per minute or rpms so over there you'll increase the number of turns and thus uh, you know the strength of the motor would also increase it'll produce more power and it'll get you done or it'll get your work done much more faster <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yes, Elamaran. Yes, the armature is actually coiled. It's, it's. See here, just for representation, we are representing it as a rectangular uh, shaped, uh, what to say, coil. But it's actually coiled up like that. Like it'll be actually coiled up like this. I don't know if you can notice that. I. Uh, it's not a very clear picture. But I don't have any. Uh, what to say. Ha ah, yeah it'll be like this ha ah, you can see this no so it'll be like this so these are actually copper wires which are wound up so just for representation uh, you know we represented like a rectangular uh, armature coil but it's not the actual thing the actual uh, dc motor is uh, very similar to this one that you see over here all right so that's how it really works all right uh harshita not really no 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 v is not proportional to r v is not proportional to r uh resistance depend does not depend on the voltage it depends on the uh the material of the conductor it depends on the uh you know the length of the conductor the area of cross section all of that all right so resistance and voltage although we say that v is equal to i into r it's not exactly that is not the relay. it's not that when you increase the voltage the resistance will also increase no that is not the case all right <coughs> uh so sir uh, if so how uh, how does it run an easy current so basically we have uh, you know we 
we converted we converted we even though uh, you know what to say the current that we get uh, is alternating current it's actually converted into dc so all these gen- all these uh, what do you call these mobile chargers and all they they actually converted into dc or uh, inside all right so they they will convert it into dc again so that's how they basically work because most of the device that we use cannot run on alternating current so we need so what they do is that we basically convert it into to uh i would say dc later so that's how it works so that's why all you know all these adapters are so big so there are lot of things that goes on inside over there so there's a lot of conversion happening over there all right it's not that they are we are directly using the ac current over there all right so that's how it basically works all right ha we use transformers and all that but transformers is uh, you know is a concept that, and i don't i didn't mention the name because uh, we have not talked about transformers yet we'll talk about it later we'll talk about it later in the upcoming session so once we talk about it you'll we'll understand it better but yes there are a lot of conversions happening we can't directly run it on ac so we have to convert it into dc in most cases all right we'll talk about that then we'll talk about transformers once we come to that because transformer is a separate topic we'll doc we'll once we come to that we'll discuss that in in detail don't worry all right so anyways people that was uh, basically the topic i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something new we'll hop on the quizzes right now i hope you have not left the quizzes yet so you can join back into the quiz but before we join the quiz people a uh, few things that i want to tell you is that uh, you guys know that your paper is definitely going to happen no matter what guys let me tell you this if you have this hope that uh, you know that your exams are going to be cancelled or your exams are going be turned into objective one fine day please don't keep that in your mind and move ahead with your studies uh it's already end of december you have another couple of days before uh you know uh, another uh, you know another month is about to start uh, you know by the by march or april you will have your board exams starting most probably i mean there's no official word from uh, the cbsc board yet but there's a very high probability that it might start in the month of march or april that is what it looks like so please don't have this hope please don't have the please Please don't be in this misguided, uh, you know, sense of this thing that information that you know your exams might be cancelled one fine day or they might turn into uh, objective again. Whatever it is, there's a very high probability. Ninety five percent of the time, it's going to be ninety five percent. What it looks like, it's going to be subjective itself. So be prepared for that. Start your preparations right now. Even if you have not started your preparations yet, it is still not too late. Again, I'm telling you, it is still not too late. But if you wait any further than this. then it might become a little too complicated for you guys because you'll be left with one 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 and a half month for your preparations i don't think that is a good enough uh, you know spot to be in because you have a lot of it's not just physics right it's not just physics you have another five other subjects to focus on so you have to be prepared with all of those as well it's not just one subject so keeping that in mind people make sure you start your preparations right now we have we are always here for you guys we've always been there we'll we'll continue to be here and right now guys the ed fest is going on and this ed fest is giving you the best value for money because here you're getting the entire term 2 preparation for just 4000 rupees and this is going to go on only till 31st of this month so you have time till 31st of this month where you can enroll into any of the courses of vidantu and get up to 50% off that's about 2000 rupees up to 2000 rupees off so you're getting up to uh, you're getting the course price for 4000 rupees initially the price of this was around 5400 without the ed fest that is with the coupon code that you apply my coupon code is ame pro but right now until the 10 Uh, until the 31st of this month you're getting it for 4000 rupees that is the till the end of your exam it's not just one subject it is not just to, for one month till the end of your exam even if your exam dates are extended these classes will go on until your exams are done for all six subjects physics chemistry bio math english social science all six six all six subjects would be covered and that too until the uh, end of your examinations for just 4000 rupees this is only right now during the edfest and if you feel like 4000 rupees is a lot of money you don't want to pay so much you can even join the one month trial guys that is also a good option for you people so let me just quickly tell you what uh, and how to enroll into these courses so this is the live class that is going on right now first of all 
hit the like button subscribe to the channel i forgot to tell you that subscribe people subscribe hit that subscribe button if i have subscribed you should also subscribe <laughs> all right so what you have to do is this uh, go to cbc term 2 full syllabus click on that link and it will directly direct you to vedantu's web page so you can see over here master english grammar complete 10th grade syllabus of term 2 all the way from the first chapter of your term 2 syllabus until the end for all six subjects that is it's not just one or two all six subjects including physics everything would be covered over here and all of this you're getting for just 4000 rupees up to 47% off is what you're getting right now. You'll never get an opportunity like this to enroll into any of the classes. Now, if in case your 4,000 rupees is a lot of money and you don't want to do that, you can even try the 15-day trial. In fact, guys, this 15-day trial is actually 30-day trial. So 30 days you're getting for 650 rupees, which is a very, very good deal if you ask me. One whole month, anyways, you are starting with your preparation, so why not start right away with just 650 rupees? 650 rupees is like, think about it, guys, all six subjects for one whole month for 650 rupees. That is an amazing deal. That is an amazing deal because like i remember again I, I keep saying this like when i was going to when i was in 10th standard my math tuition was around 500 rupees my math tuition alone was 500 my computer tuition was 500 so per subject it was 500 rupees and i'm talking 2010 that was like 10 12 years ago right 10 12 years ago so that at that time itself it was around 500 rupees per subject right now you're getting all six subjects at the comfort of your home from the best of the best teachers for 650 rupees for one whole month you would be able to cover at least 60 to 70 percent of your syllabus within this one month because classes are going on anyways so you are going to get everything of vedantu all the features of vedantu for that one whole month you can prepare your best give your 100 percent and after that if you want to continue you can continue with it otherwise you anyways it's not time wasted because you are getting the best of everything you're getting one whole month of preparations for just 650 rupees that is a very good deal now if in case you wait after 31st because you decide okay i have my you know exam is going to be extended anyways and you feel like i should wait up for it i should wait a little and then join then the price will go up to three thousand one thousand three hundred and uh, three hundred and fifty rupees so it's going to be double of what you're paying right now so i would say this is one of the best opportunities for you guys to join because you're getting it for a very nominal price and you also uh you know can kickstart your preparations right now itself i think it's a good deal so it's up to you now. The choice is yours. Uh, all I can say is uh, uh, it's, it's a good opportunity for you guys to kickstart your preparations, but it's up to you now. All right. So guys, with that said, let's go on to the questions right now. Let us now move on to the third question. I believe this is the questions from the topic that we just did right now. So for all those who are joining in right now, people, please go to this website, joinmyquiz.com slash pro and enter this code 214918 this is the code for today so once you guys are in please let me know in the chat box so we can go ahead and start with the topic right i mean start with the qu uh, questions <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, and every day, every day there's a new, uh, what to say, a new virus coming out. You have Omicron, you have, what is that? There's this new thing called as De Omi Delta, Omi Delta or something. I'm like, <laughs> how many more? There are more, uh, what to say, more variations in COVID-19, this thing, than, uh, you know, the number of, uh, what to say, Flash series there are. <laughs> Flash is a DC comic series, by the way. So there are more number of, uh, you know, Omic, what is that? Uh, oh, COVID-19 variants than a series itself. That's how many number of variants we have right now. All right, moving on, guys. Moving on to the third question. This, All these questions right now, we're going to take uh, take part in as well, uh, based on what we studied today. So here we go. Parts of a motor which do not rotate are called as what? What are the parts of a motor which is the, which does not rotate? Like a DC motor which does not rotate. Are they called as stators, rotors, coil or magnets? Let's go. <clears throat> I know, I know, Aaron. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> All right. A lot of you guys. Yes, yes. Uh, I if, if I've missed out any doubts, please let me know, guys. I'll try to clear it up. Oh, Zen. <laughs> 
I know, I know that feeling. I know that feeling. Anyways, so here we go, people. This is your leader both runs again. Zen still on the top. Amisha on the second. Dev Darshini on the third. Fourth is uh, Ajay. Then it's Ayush. He wasn't there. Then it's Shreyas. Uh, followed by Ashta. Followed by Ayush, Aaron, Nivedya, and Kushagra and Rudransh, Rudresh and Samuel. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Well done. Ten of you guys got the right answer. Some of you is like magnets. Magnets is a part of status. People, status are those which do not rotate. So status, under status, you have magnets, the external circuit, the carbon brushes. All these three do not rotate. That is why they call it status, stationary. That's why they call it status. All right. Don't worry. Confusions are you know always a part of our life. So it's okay. Moving on to the next one. How do we find the direction of motion of the coil? It is in the same direction of the rotation of motor using the right hand rule, using Fleming's left hand rule or the clock face rule. Which of these can be used to find the direction of motion of the coil? If we talk, if we talk about the armature coil, how do we find out the direction of motion of this armature coil? Let's go, let's go, let's go. I know, I know then, I know. But Marvel, uh, like the number of series is very less, no, that's why. Number of series like they put up is very less. I watched Loki and all recently. Anyways, here's the leaderboard once again. Zen, Amisha, Devadarshi. Devadarshi is like rocking. Moving up to the second position. Awesome, na? Silent killer. Then it's Amisha, then it's Ayushi, followed by Ajay, Vasundra, Ashta, Kushagra, Nivedya, Ayush, and everyone else. It's basically the same. Super awesome. 11 of you guys got the right answer. Only one person went with the right hand, uh, right hand rule. Guys, right hand thumb rule is basically used when you want... Uh, Fleming's right hand rule is different. We'll talk about that later but right and thumb rule because I see that a lot of you guys are making the same mistake over and over again right and thumb rule is used to find out the direction of the magnetic field in a straight current carrying conductor if I have a straight current carrying conductor if I want to find out the direction of the magnetic field around it that can be found out using the right and thumb rule to find out the direction of the motion on the conductor that is the motion on the conductor placed uh, in a magnetic field you have to use Fleming's left hand rule all right please don't forget this because all these hand rules are very important you will most certainly have questions based on it so be very thorough with that right moving on to the next one which of the following factors affect the rotation of an electric motor which of these things can uh, you know increase or decrease the speed of rotation of an electric motor options are the strength of magnetic field the current in the coil the number of turns or all of the above let's go let's go let's go <clears throat> 10 seconds Let's go, we will. Hi, something new, what's up? Ah, I know, I know, Tanmay. Uh, AKS will be joining soon. I think he'll be starting from Feb 1st. The last I spoke to him, yesterday I spoke to him. So he'll be starting from Feb 1st. Right now he's also going under the recovery period. So he'll start from uh, Feb 1st. So don't worry, Feb 1st, you can expect his classes. My God, people, is that 100%? My God! Amazing. I mean, whoever answered, all of them got it right. That is fabulous, guys. I, I mean, I haven't gotten a hundred percent in a really long, long time on YouTube. So high five, people. Super awesome. Though. Like as Abhishek sir does it, thunder high five. Like <laughs> that is my version of thunder high five. <laughs> high five. Well done, people. All of you are excellent, guys. Excellent. Super awesome. <laughs> Congrats, everyone. I mean, the leaderboard is still the same, but congratulations, guys. Super awesome. Now, that's like every question uh, you guys done have done a fabulous job. Moving on to the next one, the seventh question. Two more questions left out. In an electric motor, the direction of current in an armature coil reverses after every half a rotation, reverses after every full rotation, does not change, or none of the above. When you think about the direction of current, like A, B, C, D, if you look at the armature coil, how does the direction of current change? Does it change every half rotation, every full rotation? Does not change at all or none of the above? Let's go. <clears throat> let's go, people, let's go, let's go. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, people, if you guys have enjoyed the session so far. And yes, I'll try to be more regular from here on out. <laughs> Hopefully, everything's gonna be all right. And Ajay has moved up to the fourth position. Congratulations, Ajay Ji. Congratulations. Well done. Once again, okay, very close this time. But yes, guys, it reverses every half a rotation. Again, for all those who are a little confused over here about this one. So this is A, okay. This is A, B, C, D. I hope you can see it. So this is half a rotation. This is complete rotation. One full rotation, the current direction of current, you know, gets back to how it was originally. 
but half a rotation is where the direction of current changes so please do remember that don't get confused half a rotation the current the direction of current changes full rotation it'll go back to how it was originally so 11 of you guys got the right answer again Fabulous job, people. Fabulous job. Here's what the leaderboard stands like at this point of time. Zen still on the top. Devadashini on the second. Amisha on the third. Four is Ajay. Then it's Ayushi, Ashta, ne uh, Niveda followed by Niveda from Uti. Hare Haida. Then it's Kushagra, KV, Vasundra, Ella from CBSE, Heritage. Like Heritage. Heritage. All right. Then it's Aaron, uh, Shreyas, Ayush. Followed by Rudransh and Samuel. Still a lot of you guys have not opened up your account at all. All right, last and the final question for today, people. That's it. We are done with yet another topic of magnetic effect of electric current. Which option explains Fleming's left hand rule to understand the working of a motor? When a current carrying conductor is moved with a force, it creates a magnetic field. When a conductor is moved inside a magnetic field, current is produced in the conductor. When magnetic field is moved relative to the conductor, current is produced in the conductor. When current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a force by the magnetic field. Again, you have to find out based on which of these explains Fleming's left hand rule, all right? Uh, basically, based on which the working of DC motor happens. Uh, the options are pretty long, but it's actually quite straightforward. I've repeated this a, like a billion times already now, so I'm hoping you guys, sorry, I figured it out. <coughs> Let's go. Time's up. My God, Ajay Ji. Okay, finally, eight of you guys got the right answer for the last question. Not, not bad number, not a bad number. But please do remember, guys, it is nothing but when a current is when a when a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, it will experience a force, right? That is what your DC motor uh, you know works on. That is the basic principle it works on. And Fleming's left hand rule is used to find out the direction of the force on this current carrying conductor. So option D is the right answer, not option number A. That's all right. It's perfectly fine. We all make mistakes, but that's okay. Here is your full and final leaderboard for today. Congratulations, Zen. Super duper duper amazing. Super duper amazing. I'll just uh, take a photo of this and put it up in my Instagram. Yes, because yeah, I am an Insta boy now. <laughs> I am, you know, Generation Z now. So yeah, people, that is it. Congratulations, Zen. Then it's Ajay on the second. Congratulations, buddy. Super awesome. No? Spectacular performance. Third is Amisha. Super awesome. Dev Darshini, unfortunately, from the second. She was there in the second position till the end. Last couple of quiz questions. Uh, uh, you know, it went down, but it's all right. It's still a very good position. Four, fifth is Aishi. Then it's Ashta, followed by Niveda, followed by Kushagra. Then it's KV, Ila, Vasundra, Hartage, Iron, Shreyas, Ayush, Rudraj, Rudresh, and Samuel. And yes, that's pretty much it, people. That is all for today. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope this session was helpful for you guys. I hope it made some sense. If you need any extra help or if you want to reach out to me, you can always reach out to me on my email ID. That's it. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next uh, session. Take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful evening ahead. And again, if you guys want to take part in the quiz later on, whenever you're free, you want to take part in the quiz again, you want to take the quizzes again and see if you have, uh, you know, if you have improved, you can always go to the description and take the quiz whenever you're free. And this goes for all the people who are watching it, uh, you know, uh, watching the session as well. So go ahead and take the quiz again and see how much of the topic you've understood based on what you learned today. Right, guys? So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Yes. Oh, is it? Are you, Zen? Congrats. Congrats. Awesome. So we will. I'll catch you guys in the next session. Until the next time we meet, this is Anup signing off for the day. Have a fantastic evening ahead. I'll see you soon. Stay safe. Take care. And uh, like I said, please start your preparations right away. The code is right there. I don't think you'll get a better opportunity than this to start your preparations. It's still not too late. For 650 rupees, you're getting all of the six subjects. You will not get a better deal than that. For one whole month, where you can complete up to 70 
to 65 percent of your syllabus that is something which you can definitely look forward for if money is a problem and you want to don't want to pay four thousand rupees all at once right guys so the choice is yours but i would say that make the right decision because it's your life at the end of the day and don't have this feeling of regret because i know that a lot of you still have that feeling that you know term one examination you should have started your preparations early or i could have done a lot better in term one don't I hope that you will not be in the same situation in term two. And in order for you to get out of that situation, you need to start your preparations right now. You need to start kickstart it right away because I know what that feeling is to you know to have that sense of regret. So don't have that. All right. So I'll catch you guys later, people. Take care. Have a great evening. Thank you, people. Thank you, Vaishnavi ji. Take care. See you all in the next one. Enjoy yourself. Have a wonderful day ahead. Bye bye. See you all. Take care. Bye. Enjoy yourself. Peace out.